Hi everyone, my name is Mike Griscoviak and I'm going to be talking to you about the things you need to know about EKGs to survive in the hospital. So I'm going to go through the step, uh, stepwise process that I use to read EKGs, specifically focusing on the things that actually can impact management. There's a ton of different videos out there um, talking about the pathophys uh, behind all these concepts in EKGs. So if you want more information on that, just please look them up. So let's get started. So the first thing that we have to know are the leads. So there's two types of leads. There's the limb leads and the procordial leads. The lean leads are pretty easy because they're pretty self-explanatory. You have LA, which is left arm, RA, which is right arm, LL, which is left leg, and RL, which is right leg. The procordial leads are the ones that get a little bit tricky. The procordial leads are the V1 through V6 leads. So depending on what hospital you'll be working in or the acuity of the situation, you might have to place the leads yourself. So there's usually a schematic on the EKG machine and it tells you where to place the EKG leads, but it's good to know anatomically where these leads go. The first lead you always place is V1. So to place V1, you go to the right side of the sternum and you count four intercostal spaces down. So one, two, three, and four. And right there you place V1. To place V2, you actually just go lateral to the sternum right across there in the left fourth intercostal space and you place V2. So the next lead that you place isn't actually V3, it's actually V4. And this is important because V4 is placed in the fifth intercostal space in the left midclavicular line. So from V2, you find the next intercostal space, you go to the left midclavicular line and place V4 there. From here, all the other leads are pretty easy because V3 is equally in between V2 and V4, and then V5 and V6 are just lateral to V4. So that's a left side EKG with the precordial leads. Sometimes, depending on what's going on with the patient, you might want to do a right side EKG. A true right side EKG is a complete inverse of a left side EKG, but in reality, the only lead that we place in a right side EKG is V4R. And V4R, similarly to V4, is in the midclavicular line in the fifth intercostal space. Because you probably just did a left side EKG, you can use V1 as your landmark to know that that's the fourth intercostal space. You go one space below that, and in the right midclavicular line, place V4R. Make sure, though, that when you print out this EKG, that on the EKG itself, you write that this is V4R. Um, specifically, because otherwise it could get confusing when reading the EKG. So now that we know how to place the leads, let's look at an EKG. The first thing you should always do when you're reading the EKG is look at the name and the date. It seems super easy and super simple, but it's very important. Let's say you're on the cardiology service um, as an intern or a resident, whatever it may be. You'll be following at least five to ten patients, and each of those patients has at least two EKGs. Some of them have more. So it's common for you to have printed out multiple, multiple EKGs. What can happen is, this has happened to me, it's probably going to happen to you, is where you're presenting EKG and you say that there's a STEMI on it, but in reality it's a stone cold normal EKG because either it's the wrong patient or the wrong date. It's totally fine if that happens, but it can be avoided if you just start by looking at the name and the date before you read the EKG. So after you look at the name and the date, the next thing that you want to look at is the speed and the gain. Those are the numbers at the bottom of the EKG. This is rarely looked at, it's not always taught, but it's really important because if these things aren't normal, then all the rules that we use to read EKGs are going to be completely off. So what are these numbers? The first number is the speed. The speed represents how fast the EKG paper is going. Normal speed of a paper is 25 millimeters per second. However, this can change. So on a normal standard sheet of paper, uh, EKG paper, if the speed is 25 millimeters per second, that means that one little box is 40 milliseconds and one big box is 200 milliseconds. And remember that one big box has within it four, uh, five little boxes. However, let's say you have a really fast heart rate and the QRS complexes are really close together, such as in an SVT or in a VT you can actually increase the speed from 25 millimeters per second to 50 millimeters per second. And what that does is it basically prolongs the EKG strip so you can better look at the wave morphologies. 
Next, we have the gain. So the gain represents the amplitude of the waves. Normally, it's at 10 millimeters per millivolt, but sometimes that doesn't allow you to see the QRS complexes the way you want to see them. In etiologies such as cardiac tamponade, the QRS complexes may be very, very small, and you might not even be able to see the P or the T waves. So in those situations, you could actually increase the gain from 10 to 20 millimeters per millivolt, and that basically um, prolong like elongates the QRS complexes so they're a little bit bigger and you could better kind of see them. The opposite is also true. If the QRS complexes are really, really big, such as in left ventricular hypertrophy or in hokum, what you can do is you can actually have the gain from 10 millimeters per millivolt to 5 millimeters per millivolt, uh, and that basically halves the QRS complexes so you could better kind of look at the morphology. Sometimes there's this third value here. It's called the filter, and the filter is basically what eliminates any of the background noise in the EKG mainly for movement of the patient, and that's what allows us to have these very clean EKGs. So those are the first two steps of reading EKG. You have the name and the date, and then you quickly glance at the speed and gain, and once you do that, you can go on to reading the rest of the EKG.